Welcome to Frankly Developing. I'm your host, Frank, and today I want to take another look at how you can improve your code reading skills. For that, we're going to take inspiration from Chess Grandmasters. Take a look at this chess position for just a few seconds. Unless you are a chess expert or even Grandmaster, you will find it hard to reproduce this exact position out of memory. Now, the same for this piece of code. Take a close look. Can you reproduce this code from memory? Can you tell what the output will be? If not, don't worry, that's normal. Stay tuned to learn how to be able to do so and why this will help elevate your overall development skills to the level of a grandmaster. If you enjoy this kind of content, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to support the creation of more tips like this. Before we dive into the code, let's take a look at how chess grandmasters are able to perform this feat. Here's the chess position again. If you know a little bit of chess, this may already look familiar to you. You can find this position in a lot of books or online resources, as it is a very popular opening called the Sicilian Defense. This position in particular is referred to as the Dragon Variation. Having this knowledge which grandmasters internalize by reading about it and encountering it in their own games for probably hundreds of times, allows them to store the entire position in their memory very quickly. They only need to remember Sicilian Defense Dragon Variation. The most awesome thing now, however, is that they cannot only reproduce the exact board position piece by piece, but in fact, they can reproduce the entire game that led to that position. And all of that is retrievable in their memory as a single chunk of knowledge. In the past, some considered chess grandmasters as extraordinary beings for having this sort of memory. But a clever experiment revealed that their brain is more or less the same as everyone else's. In that experiment, researchers tested chess novices, experts and grandmasters, not only for recalling real board positions, but also completely random positions that could never occur in a real game of chess. And if you look at the results here, which have been published in a 1996 paper by uh, Gobe and Simon, the grandmasters perform just like amateurs on these random positions. So the whole magic of these grandmaster skills was really just recognizing well-known board positions as a whole, including a complete story of how the game got to that position. So let's apply this to code reading. Remember the different levels we had for understanding code when we read it. I'll add a card at the top to um, give you access to that video again. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and look at it. But you can see here that intentionality is like the highest level of our understanding. So let's start a level below that for now. If we look at this code, um, we see that first range, which gives us like numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have all of these numbers now that we iterate over. The next line is a filter with where. We filter out those that are even numbers. So 1 is gone, 3 is gone, 5, 7, and 9. Now next we multiply them by themselves, so we square them. Which means 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 16, 6 becomes 36, 64, and 100 for the 10. And then we order them by descending, which means the largest number comes first. So it goes in the other direction. Just like this. And we take the first three of them. And the last part is the easiest one. We print them each on a line. So that is line by line what we went through in terms of the semantics of these methods. But if we start on a higher level of the intentionality, then we see this by quickly looking over this method and understanding what they're doing. We concentrate on the numbers. It's like the first 10 numbers, only the even numbers. Then we square them, all of them by the highest one and take the first three. Okay, so it's the highest three numbers that are even in a squared way. 
between 1 and 10, that is the 10 squared, the 8 and the 6 squared. So that's our output. Very easy to remember that on this level and not on the same level as line by line semantics. Now the interesting thing is, let's say you would try to reproduce this piece of code, you might go like, okay, uh, it goes through these numbers, first 10, and then maybe you remember that it's supposed to take the biggest ones first, and then it squares them. And then of course only, oh, the full squaring we need to build up the even ones. Okay. Two. And then it squares them, and we only took those first three of those, and each of them was written to the console on its own line. So you might end up reproducing the program like this. And you notice how a few line orderings have changed. Of course, you could argue for efficiency. This makes a little bit of a difference. To order something first before filtering it means you have more things to put into the right order. So you could optimize that and move it to the back here just via optimization. So we know that squaring then keeps the ordering intact and doesn't affect it anyhow. So this gives you the original program, but initially you might come up with something like that. And it's the same thing if you think about it for the chess positions. You might arrive at the same position through two different ways. And usually that is not a big deal. In terms of remembering what this does, it doesn't really matter how you got there and if it's this order or that order. If the result and the overall intention are the same, that is usually fine. There are more details to it, like the performance here, or if it's not about just recalling the final position but an entire game and it's like an actual game played, you don't want the other variation, of course. So in some cases this is important, but most of the time we're fine just remembering the overall thing as a whole and then picking it up together, following that same story, like move by move on the chessboard, we can do operation by operation here in the code to achieve the very same thing. We get back this final result that was more or less resembling the same as the initial. Finally, let's take a look at how this knowledge will help you elevate yourself to a grandmaster at software development. Imagine the difference. What if you debug something, you look at the code, you try to understand, but oh, after a few seconds, you grasp the intention and you can keep going from there. It's like the power of chunking all of this stuff into a single concept. It frees up your mental capacity. It allows you to think even further and work even faster and more efficient. But how do you get so good at it? Well, you follow the same idea as a chess grandmaster. You read code. Lots and lots of code. The more you've seen, the more you'll recognize common patterns. You're able to mentally chunk them like this other thing, same again, like one thing that is mentally representable to you. Object-oriented design patterns are a pretty good example of that. You have all of these different classes and their methods and what that intention is, and you chunk all of that together into a single word. Sicilian Defense Dragon Variation. Or in our case, the strategy pattern. Practice this idea. If you are a junior, I always tried and experiment with this um, with my juniors that I mentored by being on premise and in presence of each other, you can simply look at a piece of code and I would literally switch off the monitor and then ask them to recall it. The same idea we had in the beginning of this video. Here's a piece of code. Now it's gone. What did it do? How did it do that? What was it about? Try to get your recall working to make this reading a more literal uh, thing that you do that you think about and that you try to get better at. Concentrate on this and practice it. It's getting really good at this. It's kind of essential. It's as essential as learning to read normal text before you can learn from the content of any such text. So try this skill. It will supercharge your learning. Go ahead and thank me by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Now go read some code.